Greetings and welcome to the arcade. This is episode 33. This episode features Brian Colon, CEO of Game Refuge Inc., and creator of some of the greatest Golden Age era arcade games, including Rampage, Xenophobe, and Arch Rivals, just to name a few. So without further delay, let's get this started. I, there is not enough tape for me to tell you about everything. But um, usually a lot of people want to know about the inspira inspiration for some of the classic games like Rampage or Xenophobe or Arch Rivals. They all have stories that are a little off from what you might think they were. Like everybody always assumes that Rampage was all about wanting to do monster movies, which, you know, I loved as a kid. And, uh, or they assume that, you know, hey, as a kid, did you like stomp on people's sand castles, which, you know, I had a little brother, so I did a little bit of that. But really, Rampage was uh, myself and a couple of the other artists at Midway, Valley Midway, back in the day, 1982, 83, came back from a trade show, and some of the other systems had some nice animating backgrounds, and I came back, it's like, why can't we do that? Because I was, I'm a kind of a pen and ink kind of guy, and we had very limited resources. I said, but if we can animate backgrounds, and the hardware guy in the room said, no, you can't animate backgrounds. You need, it. and I said, well, you know, what? why not? Well, you can only, because you can only do rectangles. And I said, okay, well, a building collapsing into itself would be a rectangle animating. And he's like, yeah, I said, so great. So I immediately went to, and I could do a bigger character where I could see the character's face, and he would be the monster knocking down that building. We'd let the player be the bad guy for a change. And then I could actually show humor because I could see the guy's face as he does this. So I enjoyed that from an artist's perspective because I could do a bigger character and I could show comedy. And the people we were in the room with, myself and Sharon and Jim Belt, you know, everybody worked in different departments. We said, we got a winner. So we went right to our boss and said, we got it. And he said, no. He said, no, no way. So I went right over his head. I went to the um, head of engineering who said, love the concept, but no. Uh, nothing out th there's nothing out there like it, so we can't do it. Which you wouldn't think that was the way it was in a creative world. But fortunately, Midway changed management at that time. And a new president came in like a week later. And he made an announcement to the troops. He said, hey. Um, I've got an open door policy. So who do you think was at his door 8 a.m. the next morning, first guy to walk into his office, I said, hey, I've got the game. It's gonna be next year's number one hit. And he bought it and the rest is history. I mean, it broke every earnings record. We were really proud of it and it was a riot to do. And the best thing about it was it kind of cemented our team as designers because prior to then everybody was just okay you're getting your paycheck you're doing your little part but from that point on we were recognized as game designers so that made everything a little easier a little less of a battle moving forward hey i'm rich um, i've been playing this game since i was a kid so came out here to the expo found it and uh, introduced it to my wife just really loved this game ever since I was a kid. Nice to meet you. I'm Rich. Hey, Rich. Uh, I'm Brian. Yes. Hi. I played this all the time when I was a kid. I love. Yeah, I can't tell you how much I love hearing that. I mean, Real this was. A, we had a ball making it. Anytime I found this somewhere when I was little, I played. So I'm showing my wife for the first time. What? Well, <laughs> you? Like and this is your first time? Yes, yeah, her first time. Oh, I'm fantastic. Korea. I'm sure they got this in Korea. Uh, you know. You're doing well. You're doing well. Just, I'm trying just, to stay efficient. You know, I, you know don't be afraid to eat people. Yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> so I go off. It's and it, and it's, it might be faster if you oh jump off the building quick. Oh no, you're gonna fall in the water. I knew it. You better get out of there. You're gonna drown. You're gonna drown. I guarantee it. Oh yeah, no, you you can't stay underwater too long. Oh. 
but you can punch him, which is nice. That's good. That's it's been our side game. I was the help and somebody. Oh, they're both naked. They're both naked and running off the screen. Uh, you know, we got in so much trouble for that back in 1986. You wouldn't believe it. And now, that's me back when I did the game. And if you were playing Lizzie, that would be my wife right below. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and then and then the programmer Jeff Nauman is at the bottom. So yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. I'm starting to look like Ashton Kutcher. Well, you look like an God bless you, You're sir. <laughs> of course, then that means Ashton Kutcher's got this to look forward to. So I don't know if he's going to be happy about that. That's one of the most amazing things about Brian Colin. Of all the artists, his artwork stands out. It, it's you can just tell his art style. There's nothing that looks like a Brian Cohen game. Like if you line up all of his games, the mannerisms and the humor with his games uh, just stand out so vividly. And uh, again, this was one, this evolved into a game called Blasted, uh, which Bally did put out um, as a two-player cabinet, which we have that as well. But this one being the one-on-one -on -one prototype, we actually had to... What had happened to it in his office, the monitor had fallen into the cabinet and just destroyed the board. Oh. So we were able to get the board back up and running and That's fixed cool. it. And he, he, at that point, was just like, you know, it needs to be out where people can enjoy it and play it. Doc oh. loves to find all my games that, does. that didn't quite make it for one reason or another, and then he's got the only one left in the world. I love it. Yeah, me too. Rampage uh, was one of the first games where instead of, instead of just doing the pixel art, the head of the art department let me do the whole cabinet, and I had fun with that. And you can see it on the old Rampage, my pen and ink. Xenophobe was the same way. They said, okay, have fun with the cabinet. So, you know, that's why there's a Venusian army knife laying on there and all the silliness. We, with Rampage, we got to do one type of thing, and then we push the envelope again. Xenophobe scrolls from side to side, but it doesn't really because the hardware doesn't scroll. We, but we figured out a way to fake these moving rectangles. The buildings in Rampage became the rooms that scrolled in Xenophobe. And it was originally going to be a dungeon, I mean, it was going to be a pyramid exploration game. But the programmer, new programmer uh, that got assigned to it, said, hey, but I like sci fi. Well, I just seen aliens, so it's like, great. Xenophobe was born. Group play, three player again, because three player worked out real well from an earnings standpoint with Rampage. Uh, and I got to do, I mean, I'm a little older um, in that some of my video games when I was growing up were like the text adventure games like Zork. So with Xenophobe and the control sequence there, you could find things and then you could use things in different places and you know repair a machine and get new guns and you know whatever so xenophobe let me bring that element of kind of uh, i don't want to say role-playing games but it, it it brought me that kind of uh little richer experience that i had from the t my text adventure games and plus there was buttloads of shooting and wacky monsters that would knock you on your butt so with all of my games, I like to try to make it so there's no wrong way to play it. You want to find stuff and solve puzzles? Great. You want to shoot at stuff and beat up your friends? Great. And it paid off because then Xenophobe broke the earnings records that Rampage set six months before. So Xenophobe was a joy to work on. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Arcade Hollywood. Special thanks goes out to Brian Colin for sharing his arcade development stories. Check out Game Refuge Inc.'s website at www.gamerefuge.com. Once again, wanted to give a shout out to my good friend Mike Miller and his band Origami for providing me with all the excellent music for this channel. You can check out Origami at origami.tumblr.com Coming soon to Arcade Hollywood we will have the AVGR Experience episode Pole Position High Score Mod The Zookeeper and Journey updates and much more 
This is a great time to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget you can check me out on Twitter, Arcade Hollywood at Hollywood Arcade. We are also out there on Facebook and Google+. Please email me with any comments or questions at discohollywood1 at gmail.com. All right, this does it for another episode of Arcade Hollywood. Until next time, rock on! <laughs>